this is the database that I des or database design that I created for the data that you just saw. The important features of this database design are one, this, this design is plot centric. And what I mean by that is that if you look at the three important very or the three important data types that I will be analyzing for my thesis, the soil assay data, the vegetation data, and the environmental inputs, all of these connect to a plot attribute table. And this plot attribute table represents the treatment plots. And so all analysis will take place um, by comparing treatment plots to one another. And so this makes sense in that we're connecting the uh, we're trying to connect the different variables to the plots so that we can compare the plots between one another. Another important aspect of this database design is what I call the observation slash information attribute table that's connected to the sort of uh, op to other observation qualities um, as well as to the variables. The purpose of the observation slash information sort of branch of the database design is to one, account for the fact that during sampling for both the soil and the vegetation, multiple sampling points through time had taken place. And so I wanted to figure out a way to account for uh, data that was recorded and uh, recorded across time. And second, uh, because I was not the only person collecting the soil data, I wanted to figure out a way to account for observer quality or um, assayer quality uh, so that if there is an artifact in the data, I can track back, track that back to the person who created that data. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go through the components of the, this database design individually. First, I'm going to talk about the soil assay data. So the soil assay data, you can see, is connected to the plot uh, attribute table via the plot ID. The plot ID is the primary key, but it's also connected to the observer ID as, an, as a secondary primary key, which I'll talk about later. Uh, some of the features that are included, I, so I broke up the data into three main types, nutrients, which is self-explanatory, it's nitrogen and phosphorus, um, as well as pH. And the different fields here correspond to the type of fields that are necessary in order to calculate the concentration of these nutrients. Now separated from the nutrients are biotic variables. Uh, that includes enzymes, extracellular enzyme concentration that is uh, it, an indicator of nutrient cycling throughout the system and is often produced by bacteria in the system and uh, microbes. So I'm measuring the bacteria to fungal ratio in the microbes. Also, if you'll note at the plot ID, there's three important things. So the, the nutrients or the soil assay variables connect to the plot ID and within the plot ID or within the plot attribute table, there includes the information for the burn, the burn that the plot is in, the replicate number because there are four replicates within each burn, and the plot number. And corresponding to that also is the treatment type because from the plot number, it's not obvious what the treatment type is without looking it up. And finally, elevation because elevation seems to be a, a good indicator of sort of what's going on. The next set of variables that I measured is the vegetation data. And so the vegetation data, uh, excuse me, was actually collected by my partner. Uh, in, this is different than the soil assay data in that I split it up between the method that the data was collected. The purpose for that is because quadrat uh, data, qu uh, the quadrat method of collecting vegetation information is actually most useful for calculating percent cover, or I'm excuse me, for calculating species diversity, whereas uh, the point intercept method for collecting vegetation data is most useful for understanding percent cover. And so I split these up because they sort of tell two different stories. 